As you can clearly see, it is much darker for today's video, which is not because I'm trying to set a tone or I'm trying to create a mood or atmosphere with this video. It's simply because it's quite late and I don't want the bright light to shine on my face too hard today. So today we're going to be talking about something very interesting. Uh, you can see my ugly moustache. Hmm. It looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> but today we're going to be talking about fake news, fear mongering, and we're just going to be talking about some situations in which my friends and me have been encountered with fake news. Now, this video is not political, okay? You don't need to know anything about politics to understand. I have a little gag at this video. Haha. <laughs> All you need to know is how the news works, okay? Which is very basic. So, what I mean by fake news is not over-exaggerated news that's completely opinionated like the Daily Mail. I mean news that's just completely made up to scare people. And the reason why it's made up to scare people is not so people can click on their website, it's normally so they can see the ads on the website and make money off it. So there could be an article saying, the local zoo is not feeding their animals, which is obviously completely false, okay? But because people think that, they go, oh, we'll never go to that zoo again, and they never go to the zoo again, and then a zoo which the website may be partnered with, people will go to that zoo instead, and the zoo which had the fake news against will go bankrupt, and thus there'll be less competition. So, fake news is extremely easy to understand, but the problem is, is it's quite hard to diagnose, because what a lot of fake news articles are doing is they're trying to mimic reputable uh, news sites such as the Daily Mail. Daily Mail is obviously the most reliable source of news in the world. How dare you mimic the loyalty and trust with the Daily Mail brand? How dare you? So I want to talk about my personal experiences with it because I know a lot of my friends have talked about this stuff because it's very easy to get scared. It's very easy to see an article, you know, when it's quite late and it's saying uh, America will be nuked tomorrow, you know, that is pretty scary or there is a meteorite hitting the earth tomorrow. That, believe it or not, I think that is marginally scary, I'm just saying okay. But at the end of the day, it isn't true. So you see this article, for example, saying, I don't know, uh, if you walk outside, you will die legit, you'll see the article and you'll be like, oh my god, that's horrendous, let's click on it, you click on it, you see the ads and you're already funding the fake news, which is obviously not your fault because you believe it's real, because they mimic, for example, The Guardian or the BBC, uh, reputable news brands. Now, because of that, they can make a lot of money, which means these fake news sources can literally just keep redistributing it, advertising their news, and just making a lot of money off it. And it's actually really easy to make money off because if people are scared about it, they're gonna share it with their friends, which means more people are gonna see the ads, okay? Which means they just make more money, which is not very good. So the two experiences I've had uh, with fake news, it's not too serious. I've never ever like believed it. Now I'm not talking about news that's over-exaggerated because at least there's some trust in that. Like for example, if Donald Trump called someone gay, okay? If that was the article, uh, Donald Trump calls someone gay or something, that, that's, okay, that's factual, okay? If someone over-exaggerates it to say that Donald Trump is, for example, homophobic, which he obviously isn't, he might be, but not yet, I don't think he's homophobic, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, okay? He's unpredictable, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> For a good laugh in there. So, most news sites would actually over-exaggerate that to say that Donald Trump may be homophobic or something instead of him just calling someone gay. Which is, I suppose, not the best because it is, it is taking facts out of proportion just to make more people click on your website. But at least there's some truth involved. Fake news is literally just flat out fake. It's just not true, okay? Sometimes they use some NASA statistics or something. So for example, with science, if a meteor apparently is gonna hit the Earth and everyone's gonna die, they're gonna use some sort of NASA evidence. And when I mean NASA evidence, I mean uh, NASA just saying, uh, lol, there is like a couple of rocks in space. That, that's the evidence, okay? Great evidence, seems reliable, but they make it seem more reliable with the NASA logo. The two fake news interferences are as followed. So the first time, uh, one of my somewhat friends at school said to me, oh my god, look at this. So the person who said that was with one of his good friends, who is one of my good friends, so it kind of spread very quickly. And it said that America launched 80 missiles at a Russian military base in Syria. And to be fair, 
Uh, if that happened, that's World War Three started. So obviously it is a little bit scary to see that and hear that. Now, what it was on, it was on Facebook, so it was just on, like, a Facebook timeline or something, and it seemed pretty legit, like, there was a good picture of a bomb blowing up, so, you know, props props to them for that, and I said, okay, so what news source is this from, and he was like, The Guardian, and that seems pretty genuine, when you know someone quite well, and you have a lot of trust in them, and them to say, oh, it's from The Guardian, that, that is a bit scary, okay, but they click on the article, and it's not theguardian.co.uk, it's the the gay guardian or something different okay <laughs> the, the gay guardian yep seems legit i wonder if that domain name's taken because i could do with that for educational purposes so we went on to the article and it was actually just completely fake which it is a bit scary okay though like if if that did happen if goddamn 80 missiles hit a russian military base in syria that would be horrendous so it is very scary now the second instance was a little bit more serious okay and the amount of over exaggeration in this story is ridiculous this was again another social media source uh, snapchat uh, i don't have snapchat because i think it's a pile of crap okay just my opinion uh, i know it's a massive hip-hop trend okay and it was someone's snapchat it wasn't mine it was one of my friends i'm not gonna say who it was because you know i don't want to get anyone in trouble okay <coughs> okay and pretty much uh, there was this random person uh saying that apparently no joke, he took a picture of this news article with his big mobilical mo device. Okay, I'm trying to think of cool sayings to make me sound more intelligent because I'm just an ignorant kid. Lots of fun. So, pretty much what it said is North Korea launched a nuke at Tokyo, which is the capital of Japan. Now, obviously, that's extremely scary to think, okay? Let's not even consider that. And I instantly said to this person, why... The hell would they do that? I mean, North Korea and Japan, they're, they're not friends, but they're not truly enemies. So it's not like they would target Japan because if you're going to start the initial strike, you would start the initial strike on who you have the most chances with and who you hate the most, which for North Korea would be South Korea. So that really did confuse me. And also the fact that North Korea can't even launch missiles without them blowing up after about goddamn 10 seconds after takeover. The fact that they could launch a goddamn nuke okay a thousand kilometers or whatever it is to japan i think it's more than a thousand kilometers and hit on target was a bit ridiculous okay i thought to myself well that's not what happened what actually happened okay so let me just clarify the juxtaposition the contrast okay it went from uh, north korea launching a nuke in anger initially starting a war launching the nukes to J tokyo which is i swear one of the biggest cities in the world if not the biggest okay and it hitting head-on in japan what actually happened north korea launched a missile it blew up after 10 seconds and experts say that it was destined to be a test that would hit the sea of japan so no nukes sea of japan which is massive i mean sea of japan in comparison to japan is quite far away anyway they're launching it at the sea so it's not tokyo and also it didn't even launch okay like there's no credibility in it <laughs> like seriously okay well i'm done okay it just launched and then blew up instantly like seriously north korea like come on like, if you're gonna do a missile test or a nuclear test at least make sure it can launch you know because everyone's getting triggered at north korea here doing missile tests and they're going you know what we're gonna do we're gonna prank them they conduct one it fell straight away wow that's that's just really depressing and now china who do not condemn the um nuclear and also missile tests have lost loyalty with north korea so north korea actually don't have any allies anymore because north korea always used to have china now it doesn't even have china which is you know pretty sad anyway i'm sorry for this video being a little bit different to my videos obviously i'm sorry for doing too many political things it, it's just been hitting me recently with north korea and everything and just politics recently has been a bit insane and i think it's really interesting to make videos on and it also does quite well. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and also subscribe. If you're new to the channel, be sure to watch my other content and see if you enjoy that before you subscribe. Because obviously this is not just a politics channel. There's a video there that you will really enjoy. And I think you'll enjoy it so much that you will subscribe for more videos. And if you're already subscribed, watch the video anyway. It's a video where I talk about if we should or shouldn't be scared of North Korea. Hint, 
saying they couldn't even launch a missile like 100 feet off the ground, I don't think we should be. I'm just saying, okay. 